Hi YouTube, it's Susan and I just wanted to share with you a project that I'm going to be starting. Um, I bought this jewelry box at a thrift store for $2 um, and it's a pretty old box. I say old, I don't really know how old it is, but it's that sticker on the bottom. Uh, it was made in Taiwan. <laughs> it has these two doors uh, with this magnet closure and these two drawers here. Um, I am going to be altering this and um, I went to Joann's this weekend and got some paper. Um, this really cool recollections paper, it's a foil paper and it has this um, uh, fold, the folds in it. It kind of has a black slash purpley tint color to it. Uh, so I got two sheets of that. And I also have some napkins that I have used on a previous decoupage pro project. And I think that this purple matches very well. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it seems to match really well. And um, I got this glitter board, which is also Recollections. This is the stuff that you buy individually at Joann's or Michael's. Actually, did I buy this at Michael's? I bought it at Michael's. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it in here in replace of these things here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disassemble this whole box, take off the knobs, the hinges, and uh, and uh, you know everything, and then I'm going to paint this or prime it rather with a white, um, and then I will be back. Um, I'm not going to do the whole thing online, but I just wanted to show you what I was starting with. And that way when I show you the finished pro project, um, you, you will know what it started out being. Um, Alright, well I will be back. Alright, so I'm just working on, I got these painted white with some gesso. And uh, I'm just trimming it out in purple. Um, that's all I'm doing. I don't know what I'm going to do with the inside of this yet. It's not done yet. Um, but as you can see, I'm just trimming it out in purple. Um, and I think that purple will go really well with the paper that I have. Um, that purple is Martha Stewart. My hands are covered in paint, y'all. It's called Purple Martin. And it is that pearl uh, paint. I just love this paint. It's so pretty. Um, and um, so I'm just, just painting it. So I'm going to get this done and then I will be back. Good morning, y'all. It's Susan. It is uh, Wednesday morning, and um, Tuesday night I started the video, and I was working on this little jewelry box that I got from the thrift store. And um, so I've painted it purple so far, and I still have a few things to finish on the thing, but uh, on the box itself. But I wanted to show you this paper, y'all. I uh, used some Mod Podge hard coat, um, <clears throat> this stuff right here on the top and the bottom and the paper really responded well to it. Um, if you see it has that, um, that distressed look and I really love that. Um, this paper is Recollections um, and I got it from Michaels um, just because you might, you might not ever think to look there. I don't know, you might. Um, but this, this paper is kind of a thicker weight um, but it definitely mod podges podges really well. Um, this is the paper that I got and it was $1.99 per sheet. So I got two sheets of this and then I got two sheets of the glitter paper that I showed you yesterday. And I'm working on the doors and I told y'all I was going to cover up those little grids or whatever you want to call them. Um, which I need to ink my edges because it is a white core. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to glue these in there. Um, and that's going to go really nicely with the paper. Um, so I'm just going to work on this a little more. Um, I can work, you know, I can um, show you how I Mod Podged. Although y'all probably know how to do that. So I'm probably not showing y'all anything new at all. Um, but what I'll do is, sorry, my desk space is a little bit lacking. Um, and th these are the drawers. And I went ahead and put the knobs back in so that... Um, so that I could get them back in. I didn't want to wait too long. Um, and I did leave the velvet in there because the velvet's in really good shape. And I'm going to paint these edges right here, so ignore those. <laughs> um, I painted everything but the back. And I might not paint the back because it's going to go into here 
like this, so I don't think I need to paint the back. Uh, but I definitely need to paint this piece right here and, and then the tops here. <laughs> so I was just playing around a little bit last night. I was watching a little bit of my drama on TV and um, I'm kind of a little tired this week because I'm on call, which means um, I'm on call 24-7. It's coffee time, y'all. Um, but um, my phone could ring and I might have to go work on an issue. And uh, Monday night was, was kind of bad, actually. Um, I got a lot of calls. Anyway, that's the way it works. Um, on call is, is for seven days. It starts on Monday, and, and then it goes, you know, then it gets assigned to somebody else on the next Monday. Um, but, boy, it's rough when you have it. <laughs> um, I'm just going to switch out my little pad here, because I have a little pad with purple on it. You see how I, I kind of keep the ones I'm using just because, I, you know, I don't have 18 of these and I don't really want 18 currently. Um, I don't know, one day I might, but currently I do not. So this just seems to work out for me. So I'm just going to ink my edges on here um, with the purple. I'm using the uh, Dusty Concord Distress. Boy, the dogs are barking like crazy out there. I'm going to have to bring popcorn in because she's, she's the, the uh, instigator, I'm sure of it. <laughs> um, she can't be outside for a long period of time without barking like crazy. Um, other than the fact that I'd love to have her in the house, that's one reason why she's in the house. <laughs> um, she's a yapper. Alright. And this paper is very thick, this glitter paper. It's a like a it's like a, a lightweight chipboard. It might even be considered a medium weight. Well, it's not really a medium weight. It's more of a lightweight, um, but it's heavier than cardstock or thicker than cardstock. So I'm just gonna put that in there like that. And I actually see a little a little uh, place on there I want to fix before I put that in there because it might cause me grief if I don't get it fixed now. Um, so you're probably wondering why I chose this color. Well, you know I love purple. <laughs> so it wasn't a real hard decision to make. Um, I have a couple jewelry boxes that I've been wanting to um, alter that I got from the thrift store and I thought that Brooke might like this, my stepdaughter. Um, I said, I don't know. I'm just going to show it to her and see how she responds. If she likes it, then I'm going to tell her, it's, you know, let her know it's for her. Um, and if not, then I'll just put, you know, charms in it or something. Um, it's, you know, Brooke is 23, so it's a little hard sometimes to, to know what she, you know, would like. I, I think I do fairly well, but, you know, I'm not sure. Um, but I was thinking, since she didn't have a lot of room for, you know, a bigger jewelry box... And when I saw this, I was just so inspired. Um, but anyway, um, so that, that's the idea behind it. Um, and she does like purple. She likes um, like an eggplant purple. And, uh, and her, you know, in her bedroom, it's uh, silver, gray, eggplant, white. Um, and I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to hot glue this down. I think that will be enough. Um, and this is called glitter cardstock, y'all. Just so you know, it's a Recollections a Signature Especial, and the only reason I know is because the sticker is on the back. <laughs> so, um, all right, let's get that in there. Try to get it in there as straight as we can there. Yeah, and that was kind of a trick to cut out because you didn't want it too big or too small. You want it to fit right in that little space without uh, any edging. So that's what that looks like. And I think that's going to be really cute. And I'm not sure how I'm going to decorate this, if I'm going to embellish it a lot. I did have this idea where I might, I don't know, I'm not sure, the paper is so pretty, I really hate to uh, cover it up, but if I do embellish it, I'm going to embellish it with metal embellishments. 
Um, so it'll be kind of, I don't want to say steampunk, but it'll definitely have that industrial look if I do that. So you all know how I operate. I don't really know what I'm doing. I just start doing it and whatever. And just the back of it. So I left that velvet the way that it is. And I think that looks fine. Um, Alright, so that worked really well. No bumps or anything. I'm really tickled about that. Though I do have a lot of this uh, paint left. So what I think I might do is go ahead and paint the edges. Yeah. So Monday, you know, usually... A beginning of on call week it's real it's not real bad um, but this week um, the good news is is I, I was already kind of involved but another tech was working on an issue and he asked me for some help so I was trying to help him with it and I told him he needed to go back to the vendor because something wasn't right with what we had and um, um, it was email related and um, so he had called and left a voice message. The ticket came in about 2, uh, 3 p.m., something like that. And um, the so he called and he left the vendor a voice message. You know, it was probably about 3 or 4 o'clock. And um, so the, the vendor hadn't called back. I guess they had left for the day. <clears throat> that's one thing when you do like a small vendor um, that's like for your website or something like that. They might not be available all the time. Um, not that y'all even need to worry about that, but if you ever did, did something like that, you would probably want to go with GoDaddy or something, but anyway, um, so, so we left a voicemail, and then I was on call, and sure enough, about 6 p.m., I get a call from that client, and she says, this has got to be done now, and, uh, so I had to finish up the ticket, um, and I, I didn't finish it up that night because what we needed was we needed something from the vendor and we couldn't get him on, get him on the phone. But I pretty much worked with her until like 9 p.m. trying to get it done. Everything we tried to do, it just kind of uh, backfired on us. It didn't work. Um, when, you, when, you met, when you have a domain, you know, like uh, yahoo.com or something like that, you can't really do anything with the domain unless the person that's the registrar... Uh, which means that they purchase the domain, they manage the domain, their name is attached to the domain. Oops, that is my phone, that is my husband. Um, I'll be right back, y'all. Alright, I'm back. Um, he's not feeling too good, unfortunately. He is out of town again, y'all. He came in for one day and then had to leave. Left yesterday, I think it was yesterday. Um, got in Sunday and left yesterday. But it, the the trips from now on won't be as long as um, he did last week, so that's good. Um, oh, but anyway, so um, I was talking about my on call. But anyway, so long story short, I got stuck on that Monday night, and I knew I knew it wasn't going to happen. But the client was so worried about it that you know I had to help her. You know I had to work with her and try to figure something out if we could. And we just couldn't because we didn't have rights to the domain. Basically, they do own the domain, but the person who really has rights to the domain wasn't answering their phone or their email or anything like that. So, um, and you know, I had explained to her that there wouldn't be any uh, issue. There's just a little error message that pops up when you open up Outlook. It's a certificate message, but it's not a big deal because it will work. So, like, I knew, like, yesterday morning when I got up, I could get it installed fairly quickly, and there wouldn't be an issue. Um, once we had what we needed, and, and that was the case, you know, so, I mean, that worked out, and, um, but it didn't, you know, it's really, you know, you worry, you worry, what can you do, right? Um, so that was my Monday night, and I didn't get any crafting done whatsoever, and then last night, I was just kind of tired, I didn't know how my call, my on call was going to go, so that's why I kind of did a lot of stuff off screen, um, so just in case, because I don't want to be right in the middle of a video and then have to, you know, you know, so I was just kind of casually crafting, which is what we do anyway, right? We casually craft. Anyway, so I hope you guys are having a good week so far. I'm thinking I'm just going to love this jewelry box. I just think it's going to be so cute. Um, um, but I do like these bold colors, as you've probably figured out by my style so far, that I do like vivid colors. Um, I don't know why, I just do. 
I am a color girl. I'm a bling girl and a color girl. And I imagine that I come by it honestly. <laughs> oh, when I was younger, I used to wear wild clothes, y'all. I don't wear them anymore. I, I don't really leave the house very much, so I, I pretty much wear what you see me in every day. <laughs> but, um, but no, I used to wear some wild-looking colors when I was younger. I had a lot of fun with dressing when I was younger. All right. So really, all right, so I just got that all touched up, and I'm just going to put that there so it doesn't dry to my desk. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and this is my Mod Podge brush. I'm just going to go ahead and finish cleaning it off and get all that water out of it. Um, and this is, uh, what time is it? I need to keep my eye on the time. It is 8.01 a.m. Y'all know I work at 8.30, so I will do what I can until I have to go to work. And today during lunch I need to go to the grocery store, so I probably won't get much crafting in then. Oh, you know what? I just, uh, let me get that paintbrush back. Um, because I need to, hey, I need to paint this, this little bar in here. I don't think that I need to paint the shelf, because the drawer will be on top of the shelf. And you know, it's so funny, but I, um, I gessoed this whole thing. And then um, there's some areas where I didn't gesso, and I just put the paint on top of the wood, and it actually looks really pretty. So I don't know that I really needed to gesso. Um, but you can see by the shelf there, it wasn't gessoed at all, and look, that paint covers it very nicely. Um, so you might not always need to do that, y'all. But I guess it depends, too, because it is wood, um, and, it, and it seems that the paint is sticking to the wood part. Um, cause that, I think that I would think that that would be one of the concerns is that, um, that the paint wouldn't stick to the wood because there's a varnish on it or whatever. Um, but it does seem to be sticking well. So, and there's going to be very few, uh, and you know, very few wood that's visible or very little wood that's visible, I should say. Um, that's painted wood, you know, cause I'm putting that paper on there, so. I just love this color. It definitely has a metallic finish and it goes with that paper so nicely. Um, I really, really, really like Martha Stewart paints. Um, they really, really go on nicely. And I'm not just saying that to be nice. Um, I mean it. <laughs> um, I'd buy all of them if I could find them. You know, I, I usually buy them I have bought some online, but I usually buy them when I'm at the store, mm. and their colors are very limited when I go. They have very few bottles, and that's at the Joann's, so, um, and I don't go to Hobby Lobby very often, so I don't know if they carry it or not, actually. Um, they may, uh, and Michael's, I'm not sure if they carry it either. Um, you know, I have a hard enough time finding this paint at Joann's because it's not in the typical place. So I don't know if um, if that's the way Hobby Lobby is, too. Or not Hobby Lobby, I'm sorry, Michael's. But anyway, usually when I'm at Michael's, I'm focused on different things, not so much paint. So, uh-oh, something just fell over. Um... Yep, this paint just goes on so nicely. Just so pretty. I'm sure the gessoing does help. And this side is gessoed, so. Um, but it is just so pretty. Ugh, love that purple. Alright, so I have most everything touched up. And of course I put way too much paint on my little plastic piece here. So I'm going to waste some, which I... I hate to do. Oh, I think I got that on the velvet. And this is really kind of a small jewelry box. I don't know if it's going to be proper, you know, the size. I don't know. I guess if you have some different types of pieces, you can put them in here. Um, Brooke has a lot of jewelry. 
Um, she used to work at Claire, so she has a lot of costume jewelry from that time, too. Um, so, she definitely likes the jewelry like I do. She's such a small, petite girl. And um, one of my favorite jewelry things, if y'all ever fly through the Orlando airport, um, you have to go to the Taxco jewelry stand. It is amazing. It's um, eh. it's silver jewelry that's uh, made, I believe it's made by Mexican artists. Um, and it's usually sterling silver, and then they use some precious, you know, or semi-precious gemstones. Like they have topaz and uh, all different types of semi-precious. Um, you know, you think you can even find turquoise. You can find Laramar, uh, which I love Laramar, which is my bracelet. Um, just as a matter of fact, my husband bought me this bracelet, and I believe it's Taxco, um, which is a very nice bracelet. Um, it's Laramar, and Taxco has a stamp. So let me see. I believe this was Taxco. Oh, I can't see it, but I'm not, I'm almost certain, see, I don't know, you can't see it, but I'm almost certain it's Taxco, um, I because my husband flies out of, <laughs> which one of the cool things, y'all, is he knows I love this jewelry, um, and it's about medium priced, I mean, uh, this bracelet it probably wasn't super cheap, so it's not cheap jewelry by any means. It's it's handmade uh, silver jewelry, sterling silver jewelry. Um, and you can see it's like an inlay. Is that not beautiful? Um, but I have a bunch of pieces. But anyway, so we were flying out one day, and we got Brooke a ring, and um, I picked it out. And it's this huge garnet ring. It's beautiful. It has a, well, we both picked it out, I should say. But it has a, like a, two or three carat garnet on the top, which is how I roll. I mm -hmm. like big carat jewelry. <laughs> I come by that honestly. My grandmother was the same way. I cannot help it, y'all. I just feel like my finger or my hand is naked if it's if it's a smaller... You know, some people like smaller rings. I happen to like really big honking rings. <laughs> um, like cocktail size. Um... Um, which was, my, my husband was like, how am I going to find you an engagement ring? <laughs> you know. And, uh, um, but anyway, I think he did very well. But anyway, um, my story is, is that we bought her this and she's so petite. Like she's five foot, you know, five maybe. <clears throat> and tiny, tiny. I don't think she weighs more than a hundred pounds. She's like a size zero. And, um, I told him, I said, this is a great ring, you know, and it's great. It's like a three carat garnet. It's just a deep red. It's beautiful. They have garnet there too. Um, and, um, you know, it was kind of like, wasn't real sure because she is so petite. Would she like the bigger jewelry? I don't think she has taken that ring off since he, we got it for her. So <laughs> the story, the moral of the story is, is she is just like me. So I know who's probably going to get my jewelry when I go <laughs> and wear it, hopefully. I mean, that would be the, the ideal thing, right? Um, it won't be too big for her because <laughs> she's only 23 and she's already wearing three carat. And um, so by the time she's my age, she'll probably exceed the carat size that I wear. <laughs> um, but I like, um, I don't have to have like precious I do like you know I like sapphire because that's my birthstone so I may have a few sapphire pieces um but I'm not a huge um I mean every girl likes diamonds and any girl that says she doesn't she's probably lying but I like colored gemstones I mean I really if if I were to see a dot well and it just depends right because it could be a well-cut diamond ring if it has a lot of sparkle I'm probably gonna like it but I mean I like I like turquoise, or, um, I like turquoise, but I like, um, topaz, and, um, I love topaz, like, London topaz is one of my favorites, um, I love amethyst, I love anything that has a lot of color, um, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not overly, I like colored diamonds, but they just don't have that punch to me, but, you know, it depends on how it's made, right, because, if it's like a pave, something or the other, <clears throat> pave to me is always really pretty. It always maximizes whatever stone they use. So 
I really like pave. Um, anyway, so I, I forget where we were going with this story, but that, that Brooke actually likes bigger jewelry too. And, um, so that's, we kind of share that whole jewelry love thing. And, uh, um, so I don't know. She maybe she can fit a couple pieces in here. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she can um, use it for you know something else. You know, you just never know. Anyway, so now let's see what time is it? Eight eleven. I have already cut my paper for the sides, and um, I basically just cut it a quarter short than what. The measurement is and on this side I actually cut it shorter on the side because I have my hinge holes and I really didn't want to cover up my hinge holes so it's gonna look a little weird because there's gonna be a little gap there but my hinges are gonna be there so I just want to be careful with that I will go ahead and I think I'm gonna take a small break because it is right before work so I need to let my dog in because she's gonna drive me nuts um, but when I come back I got these two pieces which I might go ahead and do just depending on how busy I get today, which go on the sides. And then I did cut a piece for the back. Um, the back is going to have the same paper. All right, well, it was nice chatting with y'all this morning. So I can't wait to show you the next video and see where we're at. You guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. All right, I'm back, and I wanted to show you, um, if you've never heard of Taxco, some of you may have heard of it. Taxco has kind of been around for many years, and my first piece of Taxco, and that's how I pronounce it, it's T-A-X-C-O, and most everything has a Taxco stamp on the back of it, um, but I inherited this bracelet from my grandmother when she passed away, and it is sterling silver, and it needs to be cleaned. It's a little bit tarnished, and actually, technically, you really don't want to clean it um, because it does have a tarnish. Um, it has that vintage, that aged look on it. Um, but anyway, so that was my first piece. And my grandmother bought this like in the 50s. And I don't know where she bought it. But it's sterling silver and it's just gorgeous, y'all. Um, and their jewelry is very well made. And they have like a, a tax code stamp on it. Um, but it's made by, artes you know, Mexican artisans. Like from Mexico. So, um, which I'm sure you all understood that. But um, anyway, so... Um, you, they have it. I think you might can buy it online. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'm not sure exactly. But when I saw it, it was at the Orlando airport. And like, you know those flower stands that they have in the middle of the airports? Um, it was in one of those um, at the Orlando airport. So if you ever go, you have to check out that stand if you are a jewelry person. Um, because um, I think... I think most all of their stuff is sterling silver, um, if I'm not mistaken. At least everything I've ever bought from them is sterling silver. Um, and their prices, like their rings range, um, they can be anywhere from like, uh, probably if like $30, $40 to $100 and, you know, I don't know, $100 and something. Um, but um, if you know anybody that likes jewelry or you like jewelry, um, I highly recommend it. Um, anyway, so this paper is kind of wrinkled. Did you see that? That's how it came when I bought it. And it has a black core, a black base, and then it has that metallic finish on the top. And the other day when I did my other project, I just kind of put the uh, Mod Podge on the project itself and then put the paper in place. But since this has got some cur you know, some areas inside that I want to make sure are covered very well, <clears throat> I actually do put the Mod Podge on the back of the paper. Um, the only reason I might not put the Mod Podge on the back of the paper, which everyone's different. I've seen people always do that. Um, but I just don't really want the wrinkle as much a lot of times when I'm putting, when I'm using Mod Podge. Um, I'm not really after that wrinkled look. Um, just really trying to adhere, adhere the paper. Um, so it just depends on what kind of look you're trying to achieve. But this particular paper, you can put it on the back. And then I also put it on the piece itself. Um, and I try not to get it in the holes, although that probably won't hurt me too much, but, um, so basically I'm just going to, <clears throat> so I have been real generous with the amount that I put on the back of my paper. Um, let's see if I can get this on here without being directly in front of the piece. I'm going to have to put it like this. Um, and then just try to center it as best I can. And like I said, I'm trying to make sure that my, um, 
my holes for my hinges are available because I don't want to have to fight through the paper to get that. Alright, I just want to make sure that it's as straight as I can possibly get. Um, that's another thing when you're cutting this kind of paper, since it is bent, it might not cut perfectly because it's not a perfectly flat piece of paper. And then I just cover it with the Mod Podge and the metallic finish is still there. Um, so it doesn't really affect it that much. It's my, in my opinion, it doesn't. So um, that paper's a little long on the end for my taste, but that's okay. <clears throat> in the whole scheme of things, I don't think it'll be noticeable. Um, so now as it's drying, I will kind of pay attention to it and try to flatten out the edges um, as it dries because I don't want it to be rippled or any of the paper to be popped up on the tops or bottoms or the sides. Um, but basically, that's it right there. <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and do the other piece. I have been, um, I remember when I was really young, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. Um, I remember when I was really young, I, I loved doing decoupage, um, the traditional style decoupage. Um, with the Victorian style uh, ephemera. Um, I'm surprised, I guess, you know, that's no longer a trend. Um, and maybe it'll come back, you never know. And I might do it <laughs> one day just for fun, I don't know. But that's a lot of fun, too. Um, but that is kind of, um, I guess the traditional, I say that, and I don't really know that, but in my mind, that's the traditional decoupage. Um, so, maybe one day, I have some ephemera, um, maybe one day we'll do a decoupage that way. Alright, I just want to make sure that my holes, that I have a nice little edge, and my holes are... I'm going to just smooth it out with my fingers, which you can't see, but just smooth it out as much as I can. Since this paper is already kind of folded and bent up, <clears throat> or distressed to looking or whatever, you really can't go wrong with it. Um, I mean, no matter how it looks, it's going to look like it, you know, it's going to look good. It's going to look distressed and good. Distressed in a very non-distressed way. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to explain that other than that, but... Alright, and now I'm just putting some decoupage on the top, or uh, Mod Podge, which y'all can't see. Alright, so that's basically how I am Mod Podging this. And I just wanted to show you that, so... When we see the finished product, you'll know exactly what I did. And this is the hard coat, so it doesn't have an, a, a huge gloss to it. It has a it has a really nice finish. I wish y'all could see this in person. It just looks totally different in person. Um, i got about six minutes, so I'll go ahead and do the back. And that way it can dry, and it'll be dry by this afternoon or this evening. Okay. See, I take a breath and I'm all relaxed. <laughs> That's what crafting does, doesn't it? I'm sure y'all feel the same way. So I did, I haven't done a whole lot of shopping, y'all. I've done a little bit of shopping, but very little. Um, mostly, at, like, I went to the thrift stores last weekend and I bought a few things. And I went to Target and bought a few things, but, um... And, you know, I went to Michael's and bought a few things, but nothing major. Um, I didn't do any haul videos because, you know, it was just a small amount of stuff. But I did get online last night on Joanne's website, and I did buy some stamps. Um, I ha There's a challenge out there that I really want to contribute to or participate in. And um, um, so I don't, but I don't have the right materials. Um, and it's Kimbo Creations. She's doing a card challenge for her mother's birthday. And then basically, you send the cards to her, and she um, takes them to the uh, retirement home where her mom was, or to where her dad is now. Um, so really, really, because she is such a nice person, and I really, really, really want to contribute to that. 
Um, so I ordered some stamps um, last night from Joann's. They're art impressions, y'all, and they're so cute, um, which I'm sure y'all have seen them because art impressions, most of those images are pretty well known. Um, but so what I'm thinking, if I get them in time and I can get them done in time, because it's like the first week in August when they're due, um, I want to say like August 7th or something, I don't know. If you're interested, let, let me know and I'll give you the link to her video. And I might just uh, actually uh, link it, share it on my on my page, but um, or my channel rather. Um, but um, I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to work on some cards. Y'all know that I don't do cards and that I've been wanting to, so I might just give it a try. So don't quote me on this. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the challenge yet or not because I'm just... You know, I'm just trying to get some things together where I can do them if, um, if I can get it done. So, basically. And I was thinking I would do that online. Although it might be horrible. <laughs> so, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I got a couple. I got, like, um, I think I got three image images from Art Impressions. And then uh, two of the images come with some uh, sentiment stamps. Sentiment stamps. Um, and they're, they can be happy, they can be birthday. One is definitely birthday related and the other one can be. Um, and then there was this stamp, y'all. It was so funny. I just, it was just a sentiment stamp and it's art impressions and y'all probably seen it. But it just made me laugh so, and I don't know if it's like offensive or what, <laughs> but it says, um, I laugh so hard the tears were running down my legs. <laughs> so, I don't know. Is that horrible, y'all? I don't know if that's horrible or not, but I just thought it was so funny. So I bought it. I'm such a knucklehead. Um, but that's how art impression stamps are, right? They're, they're kind of on, their, their humor is a little bit different. <laughs> but anyway, so I have, I have, uh, you know, some image stamps that, from art impressions that I'm sure I can use that with if I decide to do that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, all right, so that is done. That looks good, y'all. I'm telling you, when this is dry, it's just going to look amazing. I just love this texture of this paper. It is so cool. And I say it decoupages very nicely. So if you're wanting to decoupage something like this and um, and have a, a, a different, neat look, um, check out your individual sheets of paper at, you know, at Michael's. Um, and then see, see how it's kind of poofing up a little bit? So all I'm doing is just rubbing it down. I just want to make sure that those edges do not come up. I want them to be pretty much flat as much as I can get them. I'm afraid that once they dry I'll have less of an option of flattening them so you kind of have to watch it a little bit as it dries. Um, but I just I love this paper. I knew as soon as I saw it I mean I bought this paper specifically for this project so I knew that it was going to be a neat a neat um, application. And as you can see, I mean, just look at the top. It looks like foiled. I mean, it looks, I don't know. It's very neat. But it's very purple. <laughs> All right, y'all. I have to get to work. It is 629, unfortunately. So I'm going to talk to you guys later.